Well, that didn't take long for the Seattle Kraken to make their first ever trade. Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I, and you can see in this video right here, I touched upon and recapped what the Seattle Kraken and who they ultimately picked in the expansion draft. But when you're picking 30 players to from all 30 teams in the expansion draft, that's more than enough to be able to ice our opening day roster. So what is likely going to happen is the Seattle Kraken is likely going to flip some of those picks that they made in the expansion draft for assets in the future. And in fact, that's what they did the next day as the Arizona Coyotes pick was forward Tyler Pitlick, a center. Well, the first ever trade you can say that the Seattle Kraken made was with my Calgary Flames. As the Seattle Kraken, they traded forward Tyler Pitlick to the Calgary Flames, and the Seattle Kraken will get a 2022 fourth round pick in the answer draft. So not the draft that's going to happen this weekend, but in 2022. I'm going to say Brad for living. It seems like he likes to trade fourth round draft picks. This is the last few drafts we've traded fourth round draft picks, but Tyler Pitlick is coming to the Calgary Flames in exchange for a 2022 fourth round draft pick. And I'm going to say this might be the start of overhauling our bottom six. Because I actually like this pickup for the Calgary Flames. As when you look at the salary cap situation, then also if you look at the Seattle Kraken expansion draft, while well, we lost our captain Mark Giordano to the expansion draft, that was likely going to be expected, but the only bright spot you could say about losing Mark Giordano to the expansion draft is that Calgary Flames have a lot more cap space because the $6.75 million cap hit is going to Seattle. And after that trade with the Seattle Kraken and losing Mark Giordano in the expansion draft, the Calgary Flames, as of this recording, now have $18.625 million dollars in cap space to play with, so, which is a significant right now, but it looks can somewhat be deceiving at the same time because they do have some free agents they need to sign. But when it comes to uh, the Tyler Pitlick, he has one more year left on his contract worth $1.75 million. And I'm going to say that seems to be a pretty good price for the kind of player that uh, Tyler Pitlick is. And he actually is a nephew of Lance Pitlick. Remember Lance Pitlick, who played with the, most notably with the Ottawa Senators, and I think he also played with the National Predators, but Tyler Pitlick, he is an American from Minneapolis, Minnesota. He was born November 1st, 1991, and he originally was drafted as an Edmonton Oilers back in 2010. He was in the second round, 31st overall, so that was the draft when uh, Taylor Hall was drafted by the Edmonton Oilers. He was the first pick in the second round. So overall in his NHL career, he played for the Edmonton Oilers, then he also played for the Dallas Stars, then he played for the Philadelphia Flyers, and then the Arizona Coyotes most recently, this past season, which he was the pick that represented the expansion draft for the Arizona Coyotes in the Seattle Kraken expansion draft. And then he was a Seattle Kraken for a day before he got traded here to Calgary. But he has played 286 NHL games. He scored 47 goals, 37 assists, 34 points, and he actually is a plus 12 overall in his NHL with 78 penalty minutes. And then the past season with the Arizona Coyotes, he played 38 games in a 56-game season. He had 6 goals, 5 assists for 11 points, minus 1 for 16 penalty minutes. His most productive season in the National Hockey League, looking at his career numbers right now, would have been actually the 2017-18 season when he was a Dallas Star after he was up and down with the M10 Oilers and the Bakersfield Condors and the Oklahoma City Barons. But in that season with the Dallas Stars, he played 80 games. He had 14 goals, 14 assists, or 13 assists for 27 points and 9 plus 9 and 34 penalty minutes. And he has played in 22 Stanley Cup playoff games when he was with the Dallas Stars in 2019 and the Philadelphia Flyers in 2020. In 22 Stanley Cup playoff games, he has 
two goals, one assist for three points, minus eight and two penalty minutes. So I'm going to say this is definitely a nice step forward that the Calgary Flames picked up. Didn't cost too much. I mean, of course, uh, we don't know what the fourth round pick in 2022 is going to be for either the CL Kraken or whatever happens to that pick if it gets flipped in future subsequent trades. But he's a right winger. I could see Tyler Pitlick fitting in on the bottom six, which I'm going to say definitely needs overhauling right now. As if you look at the cap situation, it said we have over $18 million in salary cap space that we can still play with for this upcoming season. When it comes to free agents, well, the three unrestricted free agents when it comes to uh, what's on forwards, well, we have Buddy Robinson, which I'm not too sure if we'll sign him, but he'll be mostly an American League player, so I wouldn't be surprised either way if we move on from him or keep him. The other two forwards is Josh Levo and Derek Ryan. I think they're going elsewhere. If you, excuse me, if you ask me. When it comes to unrestricted free agents, but some of that $18 million cap space is going to get eaten up. We've got two restricted free agents that we need to resign, Dylan Dubé and Glenn Godwin. So some of that $18 million will be eaten up by those two players. And I think, you know, it's time, well, Dylan Dubé is already an established four for the Calgary Flames, but Glenn Godwin is knocking on the door. I'm expecting to see more of Glenn Godwin playing with the Calgary Flames this upcoming season. But I also hear with Tyre Pitlick that uh, he's very, very versatile that he can play up and down the uh, lineup if need it be. I mean, he's listed as a center right winger. I mean, mostly he plays wing, but he said he could play center when I saw the uh, Brendan Parker interview with Tyre Pitlick. But overall, I like this move for adding him to the lineup. And I'm going to say, given that he is a uh, more of a grinder player, I think, you know, he'll be liked by Daryl Sutter. And, of course, you know, we did sign Brett Ritchie to a one-year contract that would pay him $900,000, but we signed into that deal. And a free agent frenzy, so we have some players that are available that is a requirement for the expansion draft. But then when it comes to the blue line, now that we lost uh, Mark Giordano, the only defenseman we have signed to contracts for this upcoming season, where the defense and that we protected in Noah Hannafin, Rasmus Anderson, Chris Tanev. When it comes to free agents, which uh, I'm gonna, almost going to say, I think they're all going to come back. Because Michael Stone is the only unrestricted free agent that the Calgary Flames have on defense that played last season. And I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if he signed to another you know league minimum one-year deal to bring back Michael Stone. The other defensemen that are restricted free agents, well, I'm sure we're going to qualify Oliver Shillington. I'm not too sure, you know, if we can qualify him and trade him, or does he still have a future here in Calgary? Because the other good sense was if Mark Giordano was not picked in the expansion draft, that uh, Oliver Shillington was going to be the other player. But he's an unrestricted free agent. And, of course, uh, the other two, are, we're definitely going to sign him. He's Yusuf Elmaki with uh, arbitration rates. I mean, he's one of our future, and actually when we drafted Oliver, not Oliver Shillington, Yusuf El Mackey in the first round in 2017, some were comparing him to Mark Giordano in terms of his ability to put in the offense and just be a top four defense, and well, now the door is definitely wide open. And then Connor Mackey, which is one of the college free agents that we signed in the offseason last season, which that seemed like that was eight years ago for obvious reasons, but... I think those. I think I could see all of our pending restricted free agent and unrestricted free agent be signed on defense. But I think Calgary is suddenly in the market for another top four defenseman. Now that we lost Mark Giordano to the expansion draft, but we had to do it, and that's the business. But uh, this video was more about uh, talking about Tyler Pitlick. So I'm going to say, what do you think of the trade for Tyler Pitlick? I definitely like the pickup for. What he means, what he's going to fill a role in for the Calgary Flames. I mean, it's only a one-year deal worth one hundred one over $1 million. $1.7 million, as I meant to say, for a tire pit lick, so the risk isn't there. I mean, it's a mid-round pick that we traded to the Seattle Kraken. But I like this pickup for what it is, and if it works out, I can see him be re-upped 
after the season. So anyways, like I say, if you want to follow along this Calgary Sports fan's journey, Home of the Flames, Hitman, and Roughneck Stampeders, I mostly do talk Calgary sports on my YouTube channel, you know, recapping games and stories or whatever else. And, of course, this was a somewhat fairly significant story where, you know, the Seattle Kraken, they made their picks in the expansion draft, and you guess you can say they made their first official trade in the NHL and involved the Calgary Flames. And I like the player that we picked up in Tyler Pitlick, which I was familiar with. With him, with his Bell of Alberta days, and the fact that he was related to Lance Pitlick. So, we have another former Oiler now playing with the Calgary Flames. And actually, in the interview going back with the Brendan Barker on Flames TV, he is actually familiar with Milan Lucic because he did play with him when he was an Edmonton lawyer, but it's definitely not familiar with anyone else on the team. But when I have time, I also do a variety of non sports content like personal vlogs, attempt to comedy. And LCD Shimmer Spirit Sim on the road, or I swear I have done some vlogging to go. But now that we're in the NHL offseason, I'll be doing more videos about trades like this. I already talked about Seattle Crack Expansion Draft. We'll be doing a video recapping the Expansion Draft, what the Calgary Flames do, who they draft, or if they've done anything, and then the free agent frenzy, which is going to be next week. And then Calgary Stampeders content, because now that the CFL season started, there'll be stories and games coming out of that. So, as I like to say, if that all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch, do follow along with this Calgary Sports fan's journey. You know what you do? Just uh, make sure you like and subscribe. I also have my other social links down in the description below. So, I say, go Flames, go. Welcome, welcome to the Sea of Red. Tyler Pitlick, now you're playing for the good guys in Alberta, in my mind. You're on the right side of the Alberta, Battle of Alberta, since you started off as an Edmonton Oiler, but now you're a Calgary Flame, and... We'll see how you fit in with the Calgary Flames after you spent your one whole day as a Seattle Kraken. So I was going to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.